Hello, today's poem we're considering is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, a fine and famous poem. We're going to be examining the major themes and conducting a line by line analysis. Before we start, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, it would be greatly appreciated if you would. Thank you so much. I have the poem here, so let's start. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. So like I said before, this is a fine poem, and it's open to multiple interpretations, which is great news, particularly if you're writing an assignment, because it gives you scope and it gives you something to write about. So let's start examining the themes and then we'll continue with a line by line analysis. The poem focuses on the choices we must make in life and how choice making is difficult because outcomes are uncertain. In the road not taken, the difficulty the speaker faces in choosing which path to take is something we can all relate to and is part of the poem's enduring appeal. Typical of a Robert Frost poem, the scenario presented is straightforward. The poem speaker comes to a fork in a path and he has to decide which one to take. He deliberates before deciding. He offers us explanations for his decision, but they seem flimsy. As we read the poem, it becomes apparent that the paths represent the speaker's life choices. He and we assume that each path, life choice, will lead to a different outcome in the future. The speaker confides to us he hopes that the decision he made that day turns out to be the right one and positively affects his life. So, the choices we make in life is a major theme in this poem. There are several other related themes that we're going to attend to later. But let's begin to unpack the poem line by line. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could. Stanza 1, lines 1 to 4, set the scene and the speaker's choice, even the dilemma of which path to choose. The paths represent the journey and important decisions we make in life. The poem's theme is explored through extended metaphor. Throughout the poem, the speaker refers to the paths. Writing in the first person voice makes the poem intimate and personal, as though the speaker, likely Frost, is sharing intimate thoughts and feelings with us. Enjambment, run-on lines, make the poem conversational. 
Enjambment also adds to the theme. For example, it creates a link between the end of stanza one and the start of stanza two, creating the feeling of a long trail, like a path. We are told the leaves are yellow and on line 12 that the leaves on the floor have not been trodden black. This suggests that the poem takes place in autumn. Autumn in literature is associated with reflection and remembrance, which fits the theme of this poem perfectly. So an example of autumn being connected with this idea of remembrance uh, can be found in John Keats's poem, Ode to Autumn. The setting is also important because other than the location being woodland, it is unspecified where this takes place, which again demonstrates that Frost is dealing with universal themes. The woodland and the paths, they act as extended metaphors, metaphors that run throughout the poem. They are addressing universal themes, for example, life choices. Line two emphasizes the speaker's dilemma. He is sorry, meaning he does not want to make a choice and would prefer to remain whole, one traveler. Continuing along the path that's taken him this far. He understands choosing one of the paths means rejecting the other and the opportunities that might afford him. Whichever path he chooses means shedding part of his former life because now is a time to develop, like the trees shed their leaves in autumn. Here Frost introduces his first theme, a time must come in people's lives to make a big decision. It can be a difficult and frightening time, but to develop as people, we must accept change is inevitable in life. The poet uses pathetic fallacy, autumn to reflect the emotional conflict change brings, and the quiet woodland is conducive, encourages contemplation. On line three, long I stood, refers to a situation we can all relate to. When we have to make big decisions, we try to put them aside. We try to place them out of our minds and find other activities to do rather than confront that big decision. Here, the enormity of the speaker's decision is stressed. The choice is something the speaker does not take lightly and gives full weight to. Long I stood stresses the weightiness, three monosyllables of equal stress. A type of spondee give equal weight, suggesting he is weighing his options. What should he do? And looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Lines four and five concern the speaker's choice making and how he went about it. He compares each path. He views path one as far as possible to where it bent in the undergrowth. But this gives him limited knowledge as it bends away and is quickly obscured. The metaphor of the bending path suggests that decision making is often imperfect. We can only contemplate the short term benefits and consequences of our decision. The future is as obscure as the path hidden by the undergrowth. Making line five end stopped stresses the speaker's thoughtful deliberation of what path to choose. In line six and seven, the speaker tells us he took the other path, then took the other just as fair and having perhaps the better claim. 
The speaker believes the second path is just as fair, attractive. It has an advantage over the other because it appears grassy and wanted, lacked wear and tear. Perhaps this path offers adventure because fewer people had travelled it. The use of the tentative word perhaps suggests he still has doubts he'd made the right decision. Indeed, the speaker admits there was little between the two paths. On line 10, we learn they had been worn about the same. And on line 12, in leaves no step had trodden black, shows the difference was tiny and superficial. Likely, instinct drove the speaker's choice. He just felt the second path to be the superior. And this, again, forms one of the themes, an important theme in this poem, which we will come to later in this video. Therefore, concerning themes, this section explores what guides our choices. Although the speaker says he chose the less worn, the paths are almost identical. He can't really tell which is the less travelled and tries to justify or rationalise his decision when it was instinctive. It just felt right. Perhaps the poet suggests that we often follow our instincts rather than logic or what appears sensible. The speaker likely recognises his choice was purely instinctive and his statement is ironic as he tries to offer a neat explanation. We will relate to this as we consider how often we comfort ourselves that we reached a decision based only after balanced deliberation of the pros and the cons and for the best of reasons when in likelihood we chose because it just felt right. Perhaps Frost is making this point. Line 11 at stanza 3 start refers to morning associated with beginning as it starts the day. Morning implies the speaker is starting a journey that will profoundly affect how his life turns out. In line 6 to 12, assonance creates a pleasing melodic sound, creating a sense of nostalgia, perhaps tinged with regret. The assonance forces us to slow our reading, mimicking the speaker's deliberations as he ponders which path to choose. And this culminates in line 13 with O. Oh. O can be interpreted as an emotional expression of regret, delight or both. It reveals the importance of the speaker's decision that day. Yet line 16, I should be telling this with a sigh, appears contradictory. I shall is not I should. So perhaps he does regret his choice. Like all great poems, Frost leaves it to us to decide. And as an aside, I've just referred to assonance. So assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds. So if you revisit and examine that part of the text I refer to, note how Frost uses elongated vowel sounds to slow the reading and to make it measured as if the speaker is contemplating long and hard about the decision he made that day. However, it is apparent the speaker knows that taking the path he chose is momentous and that once his journey starts, it is unlikely he will ever return to explore the other path another day. There is no turning back. The finality of the speaker's decision is reflected in the end stopped line 15. I doubted 
if I should ever come back. Again, this highlights how important his choice was that day and serves as a metaphor for the important choices we make in life. Line 16 is the poem's turning point or Volta and line 17 expands upon this. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. These lines form the core of the speaker's reflection. Here the speaker projects himself into the future, ages and ages hence. He imagines his future self looking back on the day he chose the path that started the journey to where he is now. Two roads diverged in a word and I, I took the one less travelled by. Lines 18 and 19 summarise his actions that day in the past. Tying it firmly to the present, it underlines the causality, the strong link between then and now, and how decisions we make in the past affect our present and our futures. On line 20, the speaker's attitude to the decision he made that day is ambiguous and open to interpretation. And that has made all the difference. Frost employs epizusis in lines 18 and 19, placing I side by side to represent the two different people he could have become depending on his chosen path. These lines link to lines 14 and 15. The speaker knows that once we take a path, it's difficult to return to where we started from because the journey changes us. We are no longer that person that began that journey. Our life choices contribute to the person we develop into. We don't know whether he means a positive difference or a negative. Also, we don't know how the speaker can make that claim because he never experienced the other path. Like many of Frost's poems, the poem provides no neat solutions. The ending reflects life's complexity and contradictions. The speaker acknowledges this and the ending is rather a hope than a certainty. Now let's examine the themes in more detail. The poem explores several themes that revolve around choice and decision making. Some themes reflect Frost's life and a momentous decision he took in 1915 when he wrote the poem. First, it is better to choose than to deliberate forever. Frost suggests whatever choice we make, its outcome will always be unclear. So it is better to choose than to procrastinate and never start the journey or develop as a person. Second, the poem is an acknowledgement that like the poem speaker, we often base our decisions on instinct, a gut feeling, and that this is not necessarily foolish or inferior to logic. A decision made instinctively still leads to our self-development and avoids the stagnation procrastinating brings. In addition, the poem acknowledges that every big decision involves the loss of an alternative opportunity. We often base our choices on imperfect information, the path bends in the undergrowth, yet we must still choose. In the poem, the speaker stands by the choice he makes, stoical in the knowledge it is pointless to look back with regret because there's very little we can do to make amends. The poem likely suggests it is far better to look forward and hope what we do in the present will positively affect the future. Another theme revolves around the poem's curious title. It is 
the road not taken, not the path. Why so? Perhaps road suggests the small decisions we make, the small paths, often have big consequences, including unanticipated ones. In time, the path we start down becomes a road, something more rigid, set, frequently used, that we construct through life, in contrast to the path we started down, untravelled, that wanted where. Frost chooses a formal structure to tell the story and present his themes. The poem follows a strict rhyme scheme and a strict meter to create cohesion, making it measured and reflective. The formal structure is reinforced by dividing the poem into four stanzas of Quintain's five line stanzas. Also, it makes his important message easier to remember. Anaphora in lines two to four and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller long I stood and looked down one as far as I could creates a strong rhythm and mirrors the three paths that brought him to the two paths that divert. As I mentioned before this poem is almost certainly autobiographical where the speaker and the poet are the same. At the time of writing the poem Frost was at the crossroads of his life. He was a relatively unknown writer in his native United States of America. Indeed, Frost's first two books were published in the United Kingdom, where he lived, including the early years of the First World War. In England, he enjoyed the support of his friend, the poet and writer Edward Thomas, who encouraged him to devote his life to writing. Married with a young family, Frost had to choose whether to trade financial security for the uncertainty but artistic freedom to write. Frost chose the path less travelled by taking the plunge and devoted his life and energy to writing and I'm sure we're all the better for that. Another theme, therefore, is individualism and non-conformity. Choosing the path that seems slightly less worn and not following the popular path could mean taking a non-conventional route and journey through life. Perhaps the path he chooses is less travelled because it is the more difficult of the two to travel down. Perhaps Frost means that sometimes taking the more difficult route can be beneficial. We are told in the final line it made all the difference to him and we assume it was a positive difference. Writing seductive quality is alluded to by Frost through personification to make the path he chooses attractive. He describes it as fair and even virginal, no step had trodden black. It suggests he wanted to develop his writer's voice, explore ideas and make an original contribution to literature. He sought to leave his mark on the untrammeled, untravelled path that wanted where. The poem employs a simple vocabulary and conversational style highlighting that profound ideas can be explored using a simple vocabulary. The conversational style is enhanced through Frost's use of loose iambic tetrameter as the poem's meter, with anapests, unstressed, unstressed, stressed, to vary the rhythm and mimic natural speech. For example, two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it's bent in the undergrowth. And these lines provide examples of assonance that create a reflective mood and tone of contemplation 
in the speaker's voice. And literature is all the richer thanks to Frost's brave choice back in 1915. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If so, please hit the like button below. Also, check out our other videos on creative writing and textual analysis, including analysis of other poems by Robert Frost. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel. It would be greatly appreciated if you would. Thank you so much. Until next time, write well.